So today we will begin a new story titled The Most Dangerous Game, written by Richard Connell. We will begin on page 52. What does it take to be a survivor? In a test of survival, what traits enable a person to succeed? That's the question posed in The Most Dangerous Game, an adventure story that has thrilled readers since it was first published. Page 53, in the rising action of a story, a writer generally introduces one or more conflicts that the main character faces. As the rising action unfolds, complications arise that intensify the conflicts and add to the reader's sense of suspense. In the most dangerous game, Richard Connell expertly builds suspense as the main character encounters one conflict after another. As you read, identify the conflicts and note any complications that arise. Good readers constantly visualize or use details to form a mental picture of the settings, characters, and events on the story. In this story, Connell includes details that help create an image of a dangerous island where strange things happen. As you read, practice the strategy of visualizing. Allow it to help you gain insight into the setting, characters, and events that surround this adventure. Let's find out some more about the author. Even as a young boy, Richard Connell loved to write. When he was only 10 years old, he covered baseball games for his father's daily newspaper in Poughkeepsie, New York. By 16, Connell was city editor for the same newspaper. After graduating from Harvard and serving in World War II, Connell wrote more than 300 short stories, as well as novels and screenplays. Many of his short stories became successful films. Connell's success enabled him to travel the world and then settle comfortably in Beverly Hills, California, on the opposite side of the country from his previous hometown of Poughkeepsie. Although Connell became a prosperous writer during his lifetime, only one of his stories, The Most Dangerous Game, is widely read today. It won the O. Henry Memorial Prize in 1924. Because of its action-packed and suspenseful plot, it remains a popular and frequently anthologized work. All right, here's a list of your vocabulary words right here. You can see there are 12 of them, okay? Um, and you can find the, I'm sorry, I wrote down all the, definitions for you with the part of speech. So all you have to do with the vocabulary words this week is study, study, study. Because on the quiz, for example, I might tell you to take those 12 vocabulary words and write a short story for me. So you must know how to use them in a sentence. Be prepared. Another part of the background, hunting for big game, such as lions, rhinos, and leopards, was a popular sport among wealthy people in the early 20th century. These people had time and money to spend on travel and on satisfying their thirst for conquest, danger, and excitement. The two main characters in the most dangerous game are experienced hunters in search of a greater challenge. All right, let's discuss some of your literary terms, which are foreshadowing, characterization, suspense, point of view, irony, and conflict. Don't forget, after completing each, each story, you must also have a completed plot diagram for each story. All right. A conflict, as we all know, is a struggle between op opposing forces, and there are two types of conflict. There's internal conflict, which is a struggle within a character's mind. 
this usually centers on a choice or a decision that the character must make. And then you have external conflict. It's a clash between a character and an outside force, such as another character, society, or a force of nature. Also, characterization. You will need to characterize uh, two of the characters in this story. So in order to do that, you have to know about uh, what makes a character and gives that character their personality. They are called character traits, which are special qualities unique to a person. Character traits include things like a person's values, their likes and dislikes, their habits, ways of speaking and walking, and so on. In literature, you learn of characters' traits by paying attention to the details given by the narrator and other characters. Also, another way to learn of characters' traits is by listening listening to their dialogue or their conversations. The dialogue helps reveal the characters' personalities and their feelings about one another. Also, we have protagonist. A protagonist is the, usually the main character and usually the hero or the good guy. The antagonist is a character or a force that opposes the protagonist and it's usually the bad guy. Dynamic character, character that changes in some important way in the story. Static character, a character that does not change so much in a story. Subordinate character, this is a character, character that plays a role in the story, but he or she is not part of the main plot. Okay. You can find all your sheets along with some uh, pictures and SMS. You also have a scave scavenger hunt sheet. Uh, you have a conflict sheet in there. So make sure you check everything. Uh, let's see what else we got. Okay, let's start reading on page 54, The Most Dangerous Game by Richard Connell. Pay close attention. There's lots of details. There's lots of imagery in the story. Off there to the right, somewhere, is a large island, said Whitney. It's rather a mystery. What island is it? Rainsford asked. The old charge, co charge call it Ship Trap Island, Whitney replied. A suggestive name, isn't it? Sailors have a curious dread of the place. I don't know why. Some superstition. Can't see it, remarked Rainsford, trying to peer through the dank tropical night that was palpable as it pressed its thick, warm blackness in upon the yacht. You've good eyes, said Whitney with a laugh, and I've seen you pick off a moose moving in the brown fall bush at 400 yards. But even you can't see four miles or so through a moonless Caribbean night. Not 400 yards, admitted Rainsford. Ugh, oh, it's like moist black velvet. It will be light enough in Rio, promised Whitney. We should make it in a few days. I hope the Jaguar guns have come from Purdy's. We should have some good hunting up the Amazon. Great sport, hunting. The best in the world, agreed Rainsford. For the hunter amended Whitney, not for the jaguar. Don't talk what rot, Whitney, said Rainsford. You're a big game hunter, not a philosopher. Who cares how a jaguar feels? Perhaps the jaguar does, observed Whitney. Bah, they've no understanding. Even so, I rather think they understand one thing, fear. The fear of pain and the fear of death. Nonsense, laughed Rainsford. This hot weather is making you soft, Whitney. Be a realist. The world is made up of two classes, the hunters and the huntees. 
Luckily, you and I are hunters. Do you think we've passed that island yet? I can't tell in the dark. I hope so. Why? asked Rainsford. The place has a reputation, a bad one. Cannibals, suggested Rainsford. Hardly. Even cannibals wouldn't live in such a godforsaken place. But it's gotten into, into sailor lore somehow. Didn't you notice that the crew's nerves seemed a bit jumpy today? They were a bit strange, now you mention it. Even Captain Nielsen. Yes, even that tough-minded old Swede, who'd go up to the devil himself and ask him for a light. Those fishy blue eyes held a look I never saw there before. All I could get out of him was, this place has an evil name among seafaring men, sir. Then he said to me very gravely, don't you feel anything? As if the air about us was actually poisonous. Now, you mustn't laugh when I tell you this. I did feel something like a sudden chill. There was no breeze. The sea was as flat as a plate glass window. We were drawing near the island then. What I felt was a, a mental chill, a sort of sudden dread. Pure imagination, said Rainsford. One superstitious sailor can taint the whole ship's company with his fear. Maybe, but sometimes I think sailors have an extra sense that tells them when they are in danger. Sometimes I think evil is a tangible thing, with wavelengths, just as sound and light have. An evil place can, so to speak, broadcast vibrations of evil. Anyhow, I'm glad we're getting out of this zone. Well, I think I'll turn in now, Rainsford. I'm not sleepy, said Rainsford. I'm going to smoke another pipe up, up, up on the after deck. Good night then, Rainsford. See you at breakfast. Right, good night, Whitney. There was no sound in the night as Rainsford sat there, but the muffled throb of the engine that drove the yacht swiftly through the darkness and the swish and ripple of the wash of the propeller. Rainsford, reclining in a steamer chair, indolently puffed on his favorite briar. The sensuous drowsiness of the night was on him. It's so dark, he thought, that I could sleep without closing my eyes. The night would be my eyelids. All right, that ends our session for today. We'll continue the story after tomorrow.